Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and I am autistic. In April, there is going to be a disability readathon, which I'll be linking below. So I thought it would be a good time to recommend books with autistic representation. First, a brief product placement. I make resin jewelry. I also make clay jewelry. And I also make bookmarks. Some printed bookmarks like these and some embroidered bookmarks like these which are a little bit thicker and look like this inside of a book. And this is my current copy of The Kiss Quotient because I am always rereading The Kiss Quotient. So I'm going to organize this by genre and first is sci-fi and fantasy. So An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. This one is about an autistic girl who is living on a space station that is built around a miniature star and it tackles a lot of issues like racism, classism, sexism, stratification of society and also looks at gender in a lot of interesting ways because this space station is divided up into decks and each deck has its own miniature culture and each culture looks at gender in a different way. There are a lot of trigger warnings for this book. It was a very slow and difficult read for me but definitely worth it. I loved getting to know her main character and seeing the way that autism manifested for her as well as the rest of her personality. Then we have Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant and I just recommended this for my book club to read and it got picked and I'm very happy about that because it has really nice autism representation. It's very casual and the autistic character is very comfortable with it and accepting of it and the people around her are also very accepting of it and that's very nice to see. This is about a big science ship that goes out to the Mariana Trench to try to find mermaids because there was a ship sent out seven years ago that tried to find mermaids and found them and got eaten. And there are a lot of people on this ship wanting to find out what really happened back then and also some people who were connected to the original ship who lost family members who are wanting to get a little bit of revenge as well as closure. And we get to see a lot of scientists doing really interesting things. It starts off a bit slow paced as we're figuring out everybody's motivations for being on this ship but I didn't mind because everybody's motivations are really interesting. And then of course there is the mermaid section which starts at about the 50% point and then the book goes somewhat from a suspense horror feeling book to more of an action book which is a really interesting dichotomy. I absolutely adore the autistic character and also her love interest. This is a book with a bunch of different perspectives, some of them more important than others, some that get visited more times than others, and I really liked seeing from everybody's different points of view. Then we have The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi. This one is set in, I believe, Renaissance France. It features five perspective characters who are also the five main characters and it rotates through their perspectives in a really nice orderly fashion. One of these five characters is autistic and I really enjoyed her character. She is their blowing things up expert and I really enjoy getting to see that and I also really liked her relationships with the rest of the crew as this is a heist crew. They have been liberating various artifacts from a society that several of them have reasons to dislike who originally stole these artifacts and they are usually selling them back to the original owners. This is a YA fantasy novel as there are lots of magical elements. All the artifacts are magical and some of the main characters have a little bit magical powers. I really like the whole heist dynamic and also the very complicated interplay of relationships between the characters along with a fascinating if somewhat contrived plot. Now on to romance and I was actually somewhat surprised when I was tallying these up at how many of these books are romances but you know it's actually really nice to have autistic people portrayed as someone who can be fallen in love with and you can have that part of life. And so the first one is The Kiss Quotient. This is about a super awkward autistic lady who is very successful in her career but has had little success in her dating life and she feels like part of this is her difficulty and inexperience with sex and so she decides to hire a prostitute to teach her how to have sex. Obviously things don't go according to plan as this is a romance with the prostitute as the love interest so things get a lot more complicated than she originally planned and I really enjoyed the way that this book looked at touch aversion and to a certain extent sex aversion because the main character 
the way sex has been introduced to her has been in a very negative way and so the love interest has to figure out a way to make her more comfortable and so how compassionate and careful he was with her really made me fall in love with him as well as them both having self-esteem issues i really enjoy stories like that because I have a little bit of self-esteem issues and seeing two people with that fall in love anyway is really special to me. This is by Helen Huang, I don't think I mentioned, and I just find it so precious that I reread it all of the time. Along that same vein, we have The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This one is about a cousin of the love interest from this book who is autistic. He is not interested in dating because he had something traumatic happen when he was a teen that made him feel like he's incapable of real emotion and definitely real love and so he doesn't want to get anyone else involved with him who would want him to love them and be hurt that he can't. So this is a case of an autistic person being not so very much in touch with their emotions and having trouble realizing why they process emotions so different from other people because he experiences grief very differently and so he felt because his grief look different from other people's that must mean he's not grieving at all so his mother takes things into her own hands in a slightly ace phobic way and aerophobic way by assuming that he must need to have a romantic relationship instead of just letting him live but she happens to be right about the reasons that he is not getting involved it's not because he is a spec it's because of this trauma in his past and so it works out that she goes to vietnam i believe she was an immigrant and the main character and his brother were born in the united states so where she was originally from and finds a girl who is poor and would like to go to the US and find some opportunities there. Manipulative and a bit iffy, but I really like the way things go from there. The relationship that this young lady has with Kai, the main character, I believe her name is Esme. I really like their relationship and the way they grow and the way that Esme figures out ways other than being with Kai that she can become a US citizen and the ways that she can get various visas and go to college and make things better for herself and her daughter who is still in Vietnam and also I believe her mother lives with her and she supports them both and I find that really special and the way that she worked with other immigrants to figure out how to stay and how to thrive in this new world and I really liked seeing that support network and of course seeing Kai work through his emotions and figure out how he really feels about things and how he feels about Esme. Then we have The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This is the beginning of a series by Jennifer Ashley that feature this main character's family. It is about an autistic hero and a heroine who is very accepting of him. It is set in, I believe, the late 1800s. And like a lot of historical romances set in the 1800s in England, uh, features the family of a duke. Our hero is the younger brother of the duke, and our heroine is a suddenly rich single lady, a widow who didn't get her money from her late husband, but inherited it from her late employer who she worked as a lady's companion for. And I really love that she is so independent in this book and is not financially dependent on the hero or any men. This also features some really nice relationships between her and other women and shows the hero having really nice positive relationships with women other than the heroine. This is actually another case of an autistic hero thinking that he can't love because he loves so differently from other people and doesn't recognize it as love and other people who have talked to him and have told him that he can't love. So I really like exploring that again and seeing how he comes to realize how his emotions are different from other people's and how this very sweet lady <laughs> cares about him and thinks that all his little differences aren't anything negative and she actually really likes those things about him. I also enjoy the rest of the series that features him as a side character and a bunch more really sweet romances. Then we have one who is not confirmed to be autistic by the creator or on page but who is clearly portrayed as neurodivergent and who exhibits a lot of traits that fit in specifically with autism and make more sense for autism rather than the very closely related neurodivergencies of OCD and ADHD. And that is How to Be a Normal Person by TJ Klune. This features a neurodivergent main character who 
is dealing with grief from the loss of his father and is alone in his house for the first time in his life and doesn't have super close relationships with other people. There are various people who have inserted themselves into his life pretty much women and I really like his relationships with those women there is the owner of the coffee shop across the street who looks after him and there are also three uh, what are they called the we three queens who come into the video store that he voluntarily <laughs> works at not video store it's a rental place that he voluntarily works at that his father owned but that he doesn't need any of the money from because his father also owned a lot of other um, real estate, including the coffee shop across the street. But he goes into this video rental place every day and um, stands behind the desk and reticently rents out movies to people um, because it gives him a sense of normalcy. And it's also where he uh, meets up with the Wee Three Queens every day and rents them out uh, the next movie in alphabetical order. Then change comes into his life as the coffee shop gets a new employee who is a very cute guy <laughs> um, who also thinks that our main character Gus is very cute and we get a nice sweet romance there which again deals with a neurotypical person finding an autistic person really attractive and adorable. I really like the exploration of grief and the exploration of <laughs> people who have inserted themselves into your life type friendships and also asexuality because Gus is gray ace and his love interest is a sex repulsed and I literally loved getting to see several different parts of my identity in that because I am also a sex repulsed. Then we move on to contemporaries, the first of which is Queens of Geek, which is a story all that takes place entirely, I believe, at a weekend con. It is a lot of fun. It has, I believe, two perspective characters, both women, one of whom is autistic, and who gets to meet another creator at this con who is autistic. And I really love the exploration of their relationship um with the other character we have an exploration of a fake dating relationship that has ended and dealing with that and also finding a new relationship when you are a social media uh influencer i believe they're called and where multiple parts of a relationship are famous and trying to figure out how to manage that without it being um without having other people input their opinions that can get really toxic. And we also have a very sweet little side romance between the autistic character and one of her longtime friends. That one was by Jen Wilde, and the next one is Please Don't Hug Me by Kay Care. This one is set in Australia and is all about a girl dealing with the fact that her brother isn't around anymore as she is about to graduate high school. He's been a really big part of her life, obviously, and now she is dealing with the rest of her life, moving on from friendships, gaining new friends, dealing with trying to be employed when you're an autistic person, when a lot of jobs are very anti-disabled people and also figuring out just how to live in the world uh, by writing letters to her absent brother and so this is an epistolary novel um, and I really liked how it leaned into that format by having some of the letters be um, very much what the main character is feeling at the time and not necessarily a coherent story how it would be told if it was in regular format. I also liked seeing how the main character handled all of these friendship employment issues and how she and also that she went to therapy and that her therapist had various ways of walking her through figuring these things out. Then there is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol and I actually found this book through social media following various autistic people online and began to follow the author and found out about what she was writing and then ordered this in from the UK because this is the UK cover. The um, American cover looks like this so very different and it seems like Americans don't like pretty bright colors <laughs> but also this one definitely gives off neurodivergent vibes. But anyway, this is set in a little bit outside Edinburgh, I think, 
in a small Scottish town, which I believe is similar to where Elle McNichol grew up. And while not everything in this book is drawing from the author's life, there are parts of it, like the very nasty teacher in this book that treated autistic people very badly, uh, that are very accurate to true life, according to her. And this centers on this about 12 year old autistic girl who learns about the witch trials that happen in her town and wants to have a memorial created for those women because she realizes that most of the women were probably just neurodivergent and or just didn't do as they were told by men and the fact that this is used as a tourist enjoyment thing and people get off on the gore rather than realizing that these were real people who were harmed unfairly really upsets her and I really like watching her journey of working through the town finding support for getting a memorial and changing the narrative surrounding the witch trials. Also, her special interest is sharks, so that's why there are sharks all over the cover. Then another headcanon one where the character th clearly shows neurodivergent traits and ones that are specifically associated with autism is Geek Girl by Holly Smale. I just read this book on the recommendation of Renee from the Library of Alexandria and I really really enjoyed it. She said that it had a really sweet and kind love interest which is something that I had said I was looking for and so I was very happy with this book. It does have that kind of love interest so thank you Renee. This is about a young high school age very unpopular, neurodivergent, awkward girl who gets spotted for a uh, modeling agency and um, when her best friend is someone who's really interested in modeling and she really isn't, uh, but she decides that she would like to go along with it because she wants a change in her life. She doesn't want to just be this super unpopular girl anymore. She wants to learn how to be something else. I really like this book's journey of self-discovery with her figuring out what things she doesn't like about herself, how she maybe those aren't bad things after all, and figuring out new things that she could try that maybe she will like more than she thinks she will, along with her relationships with all the people around her because she has a father who is also clearly neurodivergent and who is kind of her sidekick throughout the story, and there's, she also has a stepmother who is really wonderful and awesome, and also this best friend who she is super nervous about talking to about this whole modeling thing because she doesn't want to feel like she has stolen her best friend's dream. And then of course there is part on how she handles bullies and how she handled them at the start versus how she handles them at the end. And also just some ideas about the value of fashion and how it is for self-expression and um, how wonderful that is. And then we have two books that I haven't yet started but that I have gotten and that I plan on reading for the Disability Readathon, and those are Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. So this is uh, another book by that same author, but it is not a sequel. It is a totally different story set in the near future with some sci-fi elements. Company called Pomegranate that can like recreate holographic I believe versions of dead people and it like is going to explore all the morality and technological and um psychological questions around that and of course has another autistic main character and then but you don't look autistic at all by Bianca Topes and I got in on a Kickstarter to translate this because it was originally in Dutch and it is mostly a memoir autobiography but also non-fiction about autism and I'm very excited for that. So those are my autistic book recommendations and I look forward to reading a bunch of autistic books for the Disability Readathon as well as a few other types of disability books. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!